manager, and I'll also ask uh, Curtis Hogg, our general manager, to join us for that Q&A component. So uh, let's get right to it. It is my extreme pleasure to introduce Josh Schwab, the commissioner of the American Association of Professional Baseball. Josh, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Bob. I appreciate it. And I would be remiss if we didn't take some time to officially welcome the King County Cougars to the American Association. We were um, honored to bring them on board and be granted a membership or give them a membership. And for Dr. Bob and his staff, we put them through a rigorous vetting process and we're very happy with the results of that process. And we're very happy to have them on board. I had the pleasure of touring Northwest Madison Field. Uh, outstanding facility, fit right in with the American Association. And we very much look forward uh, to opening day in 2021 in Kane County. So once again, Dr. Bob, congratulations and very much look forward to uh, your ownership and the Kane County Cougars, Cougars being in the American Association. Little bit for the media that's on the call about the American Association. I think it's appropriate to give context about what the Kane County fan sponsors vendors, stakeholders will have in the American Association because I think the partner leagues up until last fall have not done a great job of really talking about our product. So I'm gonna take some time to do that. The American Association was born in 2006 and it was in part teams from the then Northern League and the Central League coming together to form the American Association. Many of those teams lineage goes all the way back to 1993. And I know the Cougars started in 91, so we're, a lot of our teams have been around for a very long time. So what you have in the American Association is an extremely stable league of operators, facilities, and cities. We've got four new stadiums that have been brought online in the last five years that average $35 million in construction costs. Um, our talent level is something that is extremely important to note. And George, I'm sure we'll touch on this during his portion, but the fans of King County are going to see a talent level much higher than the Midwest, or Midwest League. Many of our players, in fact, went through A-ball and were all-stars at that level and are now with the American Association. We have many former Major League players that play in our league and actually are there only a result of Major League Baseball's roster limitations. As many people know, uh, Major League teams hold the rights to players for the first six years of their professional career. And at that point, either they've run out of options at the Major League level or they become free agents. And every year, 700 new players enter the system and displaces 700 players. So Many players reach the American Association before they've actually entered the prime of their career. They're drafted at 18, they come into our league at 25, 26, they're hitting their prime at 27, 28. So you'll often find double A AA and triple A players that should be talent wise, either at that level of Major League Baseball because of roster constraints, they're with the American Association. George can confirm that during his portion that Fans, in fact, will see a, a lot higher level of baseball than they've ever seen in the Midwestern League, Midwest League. The other point I want to note, too, is the big difference between what fans have seen in affiliated baseball and MLB partner leagues is the fact that we play to win and lose, right? We go out every night trying to win ball games. We want to develop players to a certain extent, but the reality is George's job and other jobs of managers out there is to win ball games at all costs. That's going to be a significant contrast to what you've seen in the past where maybe pitchers were required to throw a certain amount of change-ups. You weren't allowed to steal bases. You didn't bunce as much because we're trying to get as many bats at bats for players. We play to win in the American Association and our players play for Kane County. They chose to be in Kane County just like George chose to be in Kane County. And that's going to be a significant contrast. They're not trying to move up a level. They're not competing against their teammates for the next roster spot. They're there to win and perform and win baseball games for the fans of King County. So I hope everyone is very much looking forward to that. The other part should be noted, and most importantly, is American Association's relationship with Major League Baseball. We, in the fall of 2020, became an MLB partner league. That relationship has some big features. One is the cross-marketing and promotion Major League Baseball is going to do for the partner leagues. The second is the tie into the player side, giving Major League Baseball better access to our players. So our players end up going back to Major League Baseball at the highest level. That is a critical feature as well. There's also gonna be youth initiatives pumped through Major League Baseball in our local markets uh, like there never has been before. That relationship is gonna be built out over a number of years. And there's gonna be a number of key features 
uh, going forward, including potentially plugging into major league partnerships. So there's a lot of behind the scenes action going on with that partnership deal, but note, it is not just eyewash. It's a major partnership and major relationship as part of one baseball that the American Association becomes a part of the greater baseball landscape in America, essentially. So um, to note, you know, in closing, once again, congratulations to the Kane County Cougars. We're extremely excited to have you. Uh, if there's any questions about the American Association, I'll be here at the end to answer those. So with that, back over to you, Dr. Bob, and once again, congratulations. Thanks, Josh, uh, very much for those kind of remarks. And um, now I, I want to briefly tell you a little bit about the selection process. Uh, we had a three-person committee uh, made up of myself, uh, my wife, Cheryl, and our general manager, Curtis Hogg. Uh, we had over 45 candidates who expressed interest in this job. Uh, we actually developed uh, three requirements as we began the interview process for a new field manager. First, we wanted someone that was willing to be more than just our field manager. Uh, we wanted someone that would fully embrace and be a part of this community and our schools, our hospitals, our senior citizen centers, interacting with our fans in the community. That new manager needed to embrace the idea of being a key part of our foundation's work. Um, second, uh, we were looking for a leader. Uh, that was a team player. Uh, we have a close-knit family in our front office that extends to our seasonal employees and extends to our sponsors. There is um, no letter I in Cougars, so it was important for us that our new manager have that same trait. Um, third and finally, you had to be a proven winner. We are now responsible for putting a winning product on the field, and it was important for us to find a manager that knows how to win and has a strong track record of making the playoffs and winning championships. One person quickly jumped to the very top of the list of having all three of those attributes we were looking for, and that was longtime St. Paul Saints field manager, George Samus. I, I don't want to steal any of George's thunders. I, I want him to share his impressive background with you. However, I, I do want to share a quick story about the interview. We, we were all comparing George, who is literally one of the greatest managers in all of minor league baseball to what just happened with Tom Brady and the Patriots and, and the Bucks. The only thing that's different is the names have changed. Instead of the New England Patriots, it's the St. Paul Saints. And instead of Tom Brady, we have George Samus, who is, you know, in his managerial career, he's led 13 teams to playoffs and four championships. By the way, he's about to get one for the thumb. Uh, in my opinion, George is clearly the GOAT of minor league baseball managers. Uh, finally, instead of having Tampa Bay, we have the Kane County Cougars. It, it gives me the greatest pleasure to introduce number 22, George Samus, the GOAT of minor league baseball managers, as the new field manager of the Kane County Cougars. George, welcome to the family. Thank you so much, Dr. Bob. Uh, I love Tom Brady, by the way. Um, he's that's a great story, and it's a that would be a nice thing to go that route. What he did to be successful in a place for so long, and then go to a new team that had struggled all those years, and then he gets them into the Super Bowl. It's a similar situation where I was in a very nice place, a great place for so long, and um, and then out of come to the new team in the league, you know, it'd be a great, it's a good comparison and I would love for, for that to happen. First, I want to thank you, Cheryl and Curtis for giving me this opportunity. Um, it's, it's been a rough off season. I'll tell you what, after, you know, losing the St. Paul situation when, you know, when they became the AAA team with the Minnesota twins and, and that's a great thing. And it's going to be great for everybody. And, and I've said that to everybody. It's it's a great thing for everybody in St. Paul and in in Minnesota. And and then I was told, "What's well, not great for you?" And, and again, it was tough. It was a bummer. And um, a lot of things that Josh said are true. This league is great. And this is they're Triple A players, Double A players, A ball players, guys that have played in the big leagues, guys that are going to play in the big leagues. That's going to happen too. And Every night you're out there to try to win games and 
the league's great. It's very well run. Um, and again, we're here to try to win games and um, I'm really happy to be here. And um, you really, this is really special for me because it's not easy to get in this league. It's, it's tough. And when all this went down back in November, um, yeah, I received some other phone calls from other teams and they were in other leagues and it was great. And, but it, and I didn't jump out at me. And then this all happened here in the last 10 days. And um, I just moved along and I really had thought nothing was going to happen. And then 10 days ago, it started moving and um, Kane County Cougar fans, I would say this to you, this is your team. You're going to love this team. Again, you're going to see those triple A, double A players every night and um, you're still going to see, you're going to see 95 miles per hour one night. You'll see 90, mile per, 90 miles per hour another night. You're going to see 420 foot homers. You're going to see all this. Um, the competition, the rivalries in this league, it's great. Um, you know, and some of these stories, um, you know, maybe people aren't familiar with, you know, how the independent ball has worked over the years, but from the Northern League to the American Association, well, way back in from my time, I remember Kevin Millar was a perfect story. He didn't get drafted and um, went to St. Paul and did well there, got signed, and he had a great major league career. Um, Brandon Kindler, who was with the Cubs two years ago, he pitched in St. Paul in 2009. I, and that season started, he wasn't even in the rotation the first time through, ended up starting, ended up starting the All-Star game. And then in July, he's in double A. This is what's going to happen. You're going to have guys on your team one night. You're going to see a guy one night out there. And the next night he may be, may be in triple A. That's what the league's all about. And the guys going to get their opportunities. And when that happens, um, it's my job to try to replace them and to bring the best guys in. And you want to have the right guys. And um, again, I'm really excited to be here and Again, I'm going from a great organization in the St. Paul Saints who treated me so well for 18 years. I'm going from one great organization to another great organization in the King County Cougars. And I have not been to the stadium. I've heard how nice it is from so many people. And, um, but again, a lot of the things Josh just said is so true. You're going to see triple A, double A guys every night and um, you're going to love it. And we're out there to win. And, and again, thank you again, Dr. Bob and um, Cheryl and Curtis for giving me this chance because um, I was pretty bummed for a long time. And then you guys came along and it's made me really happy to get back in this league. And I love this league um, and you're going to love it too. So th th thank you so much for having me. Thanks, George, very much. And the, the feelings mutual. We're so excited to have you part of our family. Um, now I'd like to open it up uh, to the media for any questions you have of, of George, Josh, myself, or, or Curtis. All, all that I would ask uh, is that for George hasn't met any of you, if you could please, uh, before he you asks your question, just identify um, who you are and which media uh, you represent. So with that, I'll turn it over, turn it up for uh, any questions. I guess I'll start, uh, Dr. Bob. My name is Jake Bartleson with Shaw Media, King County Chronicle. Um, I was curious to know a little bit of the process of how the Cougars coming to the American Association was coming together, because obviously everything was happening so fast with getting dropped as the affiliate with, you know, with the Diamondbacks. And then, so I was just kind of curious as to how did that process start and how quickly did that get going? Yeah, it was a it was a super quick uh, process, you know, from the from the time we got the announcement that we weren't part of the process, we had uh, uh, several leagues reach out to us, the American Association, we were very fortunate that Josh did, we had other partner leagues that reached out to us and other leagues that were trying to be uh, created uh, to that wanted us to be a part of so we, we felt uh, we felt really blessed that you know there were there were options out there for us, but um, it, it took about 30 seconds to analyze all the options and realize there's one league that's really, uh, it's the AAA league. I and mean, they don't call the MIB 
uh, partner leagues by classification, but all you got to look is look at the quality of the facilities, look at the quality of the owners, look at the quality of the, the managers and the players. I mean, the, the, the American Association is really the triple A uh, of, of MLB partner leagues. And so we knew right away, uh, you know, if we we're going to play in 2021, we knew where we wanted to play. And, uh, and I will tell you, uh, after the initial reach out from, uh, from the American Association, it was all business from that point on. This was uh, this was not a slam dunk for the Kane County Cougars. It was the most rigorous process we have ever gone through in terms of analyzing our facilities and our financials. And I mean, it was from top to bottom. And uh, we got a we got a good analysis of everything we bring to the table. And quite frankly, you know, I'm I'm proud of the way the organization uh, got through that process. And we were just. Um, we were delighted uh, to be offered the, the opportunity to join the league. As I said, great owners, great directors, Josh's staff, wonderful, just great commissioner. We just, we really feel like we've gone from affiliated ball uh, up a level to, to the triple A level of MLB partner league ball. So we're, we're very, very excited for our fans and our sponsors. Hey, George, I um, wanted to ask you a question, too, if, uh, if you guys can hear me. Um, can you guys hear me? I don't even know. Perfect. <laughs> I'm Paul Johnson. I'm with the Beacon News in Aurora. Nice to meet you, George. Um, Thank you. The fact that you have so much um, experience in this league, and obviously the Cougars have been an affiliate of ball for 30 years um, and moving into a new chapter. So what, what kind of things can you bring to, to them to kind of get them into this mode? It's, it's going to be a, a whole different story for them, but you're obviously super familiar with it. So it's got to be helpful, I would think. Yeah, it's um, you're gonna see it's it's guys that are motivated, guys that are hungry, and guys do want to get back to major league organizations. Guys do want to make it to the big leagues. That's why they're playing. But it's about winning, and um, you know you're gonna see the right guys on the field. You're gonna see guys that, that play the game the right way, and um, you know, you, you four times a day, five times a day, you got to run hard. You're gonna have guys doing that, and again. There for the right reasons and there to win and the rivalries, the competition, this league is, um, and I've said it before, it's a great league and I never wanted to leave the league. And I'm so happy that I'm not leaving the league and I get to stay in it because it's, it's great. And the fans are going to be excited and going out there, try to win, win games every night. I actually saw you guys play last year against the dogs. The only game I went to all summer was a dog saints game actually. So, and you had some former Cougars on your team, I think. Yeah. That, um, Chesney. Yeah. yeah there's going to be some rivalries with um, Chicago. It's close by. And, yeah. and again, and this division, this American association, North division, it's, it's as tough as it gets, as exciting as it gets. And I mean, Milwaukee, they're the defending champions and, um, and Winnipeg and Fargo over the years, we had all these rivalries and, Gary's always solid and um, it's a solid division and um, anybody can win it. And we're going to go out there and do the best we can. And hopefully we're going to win it. Hey, Paul, if, if I can touch on something that George said, that I think is really critical in telling the story of the American association is, you know, the best players play every night. So as opposed to what you may have seen previously, where, you know, the Diamondbacks or the Cubs are trying to develop a player. They're going through an 0 for 30 slump and they keep running them back out there to get at bats. Fans are going to have to suffer through that anymore. I mean, we put the best players on the field every night to win the game. And that creates a ton of intensity mm -hmm. from every at bat to at bat to at bat. And then couple that with the rivalries you're going to have Milwaukee, Chicago, Gary, and those close rivalries. We're going to see each other a bunch during the year it's a whole level of intensity that fans aren't going to have experienced previously in affiliated baseball. Mm -hmm. The other thing to note too is players in our league, as opposed to affiliated baseball actually stick around for three, four, sometimes five years with an organization. So those personalities stick um, with fans for quite a long time. And it's a unique feature that is different from affiliated ball in that respect. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bob, um, I just wanted to ask you too. I mean, just in terms of how, uh, how different it is for you guys running the team now, you know, when you don't have, you know, the, like you said, the Diamondbacks are coming through here and, and, and saying, oh, here's your team, here's your guys, here's your manager, and you guys are doing it all on your own now. How different is that for you guys? 
Well, it's uh, it's night and day. It's yeah. uh, and, and and also, Paul, you, you better. Uh, I, I learned one thing. You better watch what you wish for. You know. So for the <laughs> first six years, as I'm sitting up there in the owner's box with my wife, you know, watching this player and saying, "Oh man, I wish we could get rid of this person, or move this person, or do that." You know. But you have no input on what's going on, and now all of a sudden, it's okay, buddy. You got to field the team, and uh, you know, we're going to field the team by finding the best manager who's going to find the best coaches, who's going to find the best players. And so even though the task was so daunting at first to figure out, not only do we have to do all the sideshow stuff, like have the right cold beer and have the hot dogs and entertainment, but now we're responsible for, for, for the winning product on the field, which we've never been responsible before. So we take that as a real personal challenge, but it was an easy challenge for us to figure out. Because it does. It all starts down the pyramid. You, yeah. If you get the right guy at the top of that pyramid, and we know we've got the right guy with George, and I know he's going to put the right field staff around him, and I know they're going to put the right players around him. I, I Look, at his record speaks for himself. I, I don't think the Kane County Cougars could be in better hands than we are with, with George at the helm. I, I, I really believe that. Mm -hmm. Hey, George, Jake Barlowson. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Geneva and Kane County. Um, obviously, you've been a manager for, for plenty of years. How would you describe the type of clubhouse that you want to have and, and, how, and what's your day-to-day -day approach with guys? You, know, you want to have, it's really important, you want to have the right guys in that clubhouse. Um, and I try to stay out of their way. And it's their clubhouse and I try to stay away and let them have their clubhouse. But you want to have guys that are there for the right reasons, you know, there to win games and, and to get better every day. And um, your goal should be to get to the big leagues. That should be your goal. Well, in this league, you need to show every day. You never know who's watching. The scout watches you, what you're doing in batting practice. He, he watches what you're just, just standing there watching the game. He, they notice everything you do. And important to have the right guys with the right attitude. And, um, but you want guys that are there to win. And that's something you don't really, times you don't get that. And it's my job to get those right guys in there and um, have the right attitude and um, hopefully they're to win games. And, and again, to elevate their career and try to get back to the big leagues. It's going to happen. This is going to happen. You're going to see a guy there one night. We're going to be talking about it. I remember this. There's going to be a guy there one night and then the next night he's going to be in AAA. It happens all the time. And when that happens, then it's my job to go find the next right guy. To follow up with that, George, what kind of fuels your fire to be a manager for so many years? What what drives you to get out of bed every day and be like, I'm, I'm happy, ready to go to the ballpark and, and do what I do? I love it. I'll tell you what. Um, first of all, I'm not the most exciting guy in the world. I don't golf. I don't fish. I don't hunt. I really don't. This is all I do, and I love doing it. And um, And I really missed it these last six months when – I was you know, not in the league anymore and it, you realize how much you miss it. And um, this is all I want to do. And, um, and when we get off this, I'm going to go call this shortstop that I'm trying to get. And I love it. And, and putting, putting together the team, that's half the fun of doing this job. And, um, and people have asked me, Hey, are you ever looking to get with a major league organization? And I love this. This is what I want to do. And I, I'm not really interested in, um, moving on to a major league organization. I want to do this. I want to put the team together. Um, and then I want to go out there and win games. So it's currently, we don't have anybody on the roster, not one player. And, and in the last few minutes, my phone is going off here a little bit and there are players reaching out right now. And, and Josh knows how this is. Players are always looking and but you got to find the right guys. And so Whenever we get done with this, I'm calling the shortstop first, and then I'm calling this this right-handed reliever next, and we're going to try to get as many guys as we can in here. I guess I don't want to dominate everything, Paul. If, if you have a question, jump in. Uh, oh, this could be for fine, Corey. Jake. What's that? You're doing fine, Jake. Okay. Uh, this could be for uh, for Curtis or for George. Is there some sort of a, a timeline or a date in which you expect to have? you know, a roster fulfilled. I know you said that you have guys you're contacting right now, but is there a time that you want to have things finalized, ready to go? 
Um, well, things are a little bit different this year. Um, usually, you, you know, you're always trying to you're always trying to find the right guys throughout the off season, and and maybe October, November slow, and maybe a little bit in December. Um, but then December, some guys come in, and and then January and even February, maybe when guys start realizing that they're maybe not getting into major league or minor league spring trainings, then it picks up even more. Um, but the crazy time over all these years is, is the middle end of March when there are so many releases from, um, from major league organizations. And um, I mean, it's hours and hours of hundreds of players that unfortunately for them, they get released, but it's our job to try to get the best ones. And um, this year may be a little bit different because from what I understand, the, you know, the major leagues and the AAA season is starting in the beginning of April. Um, if that happens, but the double A and A ball are starting a little bit later. So, so the way I understand it is um, AAA and major leagues are down in spring training right now. And then when they break camp, the double A and A ball players will be going down to spring training and then their camp won't be over till the beginning of, I guess, May or end of April. So there'll be some releases in March and I expect there probably to be more releases in late April, early May, but we're trying to, we're on the phone. We're, we're going to try to get these guys as soon as can, as soon as we can. And um, the right quality guys, and it's going to be a busy, um, it's going to be a busy three months here and it's fun and exciting and let's go. You know, George, I, I just wanted to ask you too. I mean, you've been in this league for so long, but not with so many minor league teams getting cut out of affiliated ball and the draft getting shut down. What does that do? That's got to be an influx of talent for you guys to go through. I would think, right. I mean, Absolutely. Yes. Obviously last year too, with a bunch of the players, when they, when the season got canceled, there were a bunch of releases and, and this is new. Who knows what's going to happen if they're going to sign as many guys this year, who knows? Um, and we will see. And, and again, currently right now we have no players on our roster. Well, Kansas city has a triple A team right now. They're amazing. Their roster. And it's, it's my job to find as many guys as we can and um, get those triple A guys, get those double A guys. And those guys have been in the big leagues and, um, but we're going to see here how, um, again, I've been fortunate enough to be doing this for the last 22 years. And after every season, you, you have maybe half of your guys back the next season. Well, there, there's nobody right now. So it's, um, it's going to be fun and exciting and, um, can't wait to get going. And I hope I get the short stuff that I'm trying to get, but I guess I'm going to call them. Maybe we'll find out here in the next, in the next 15 minutes. Throw them on the Zoom. I can um, dovetail on that a little bit um, because I, th I think it's important to just understand the landscape of professional baseball and where it sits for your readers and anybody that's going to be watching these clips. Josh Buckle tonight in 2019 flew to San Diego for the winter meetings and we met with 19 of the uh, big league teams and asked them about what the world would look like when these cuts were about to happen because that was about the time everything became public. And it was almost unanimous that despite the lower levels of minor leagues being the primary areas where cuts would happen, it just meant that the older players would actually be released. They were actually moving the younger players up a level that they previously wouldn't have been at. So for example, if you would have been at a ball in 2019, in 2021, that same player would be playing in double A. It's just mm -hmm. younger players are going to be shuffled up levels. So the outcome of that is that the partner leagues are actually going to reap a lot of the older talent that would otherwise be playing in triple a or be on the fringe of the big leagues for the most part. So those players are now going to come to us and big league teams are going to keep the younger talent and just move them up a level. So at the end of the day and the reshuffling of the professional baseball landscape, the MLB partner leagues come out the winners in all of this. That's the reality is our talent levels are actually going to step up a notch more than what they were previous to this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we're talking here, it's just funny that as we're talking, and this is just announced here, you know, a few minutes ago or the last 30 minutes, and I have agents just beeping in right now, just calling, and um, they're trying to place their players, and um, and that's the way it goes. It, it gets crazy like that, and um, and again, it's really looking forward to put, putting together the roster and finding those right guys. I guess in that same vein, George, uh, I know you're making phone calls for players, but 
you got to get your staff put together too. Do you have initial plans for that and, and how that's shaping up? Yes, we, um, we're hoping to have, um, you know, obviously I was in St. Paul for a long time and hoping to have two of the coaches I had there that were with me for a long time. And we're just in the process of seeing if we can make it work. And so hopefully, hopefully I'll have that um, ironed out here over the next, over the next week. Mm-hmm. And another thing too, Curtis would, I mean, Curtis has been, getting these emails from players and agents and he's just been forwarding them to me you know, over the last few days. Um, and there's some quality guys. He's forwarding me these emails and, you know, he's talked to a player just yesterday. And um, so it's, they're out there, they're interested. And, and the thing is when players are reaching out to a, a place, they must've heard good things about this place because they want to come play there. And that just talks about, you know, how, how well Kane County is run and how nice it is. And again, looking forward to seeing it and um, it's going to be fun. Yeah. This is Dr. Bob. I I, I would just add something to to what George said. I I, I think there's going to be two magnets to, to, to get this team put together. One is we are very proud of the facility we have and the way we treat players and the way we treat visiting coaches and managers. And we're, we're very proud of what we put together. But when you lay next to that, 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 that we have the goat of minor league baseball managers managing our team, who would not want to play for George and Kane County? That's what I want to know. I want to know who in their right mind does not want to come play for George and Kane County. I mean, literally, it's the best of both worlds. We've got the best manager. We've got a great facility, great demographics unbelievable atmosphere that's going to even be more energized when, when George puts that team on the field that's there for one reason, and that's to win. I just think the dynamics of what we've done in the past and what we're going to do with George in the future, I mean, I look at, I think we caught lightning in a bottle. There's no doubt in my mind. I'm personally good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks, guys. Well, thank goodness you're both good because I got a manager that needs to get some players signed. Especially yeah, no, get their sports sports talk. <laughs> Listen, guys, thank, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to join us on this call. And I, I want to especially thank Josh. Josh, thank you for taking your time out as commissioner to, to be a part of this. And, and, and Curtis, always your involvement. Thank you so much. And Special thanks to George. George, we're so just, uh, Cheryl and I can't tell you how delighted we are making you part of this family and the whole Cougar Nation. We're so looking forward to, to writing the new and best chapter we've ever had in Cougar history. So we look forward to doing it together with you. But that will close this. And thanks, everyone, for your participation. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much.